on the NPP campaign stage. Joining us via Zoom is a security analyst, uh, Adib Sani, on this. We've looked at the governance part of it, the political communication part of it. Now let's interrogate whether or not these comments are actually insightful, especially coming from someone who played a key role in the Ayasu West Wagon by election. Uh, uh, Mr. Sani, good evening. Thank you for joining us. So that will be my first question having to do with, with I asked West Wagon not too far from memory. Are these comments insightful enough to revoke those kinds of memories? Obviously so. Um, the comments are reckless, no doubt about it. They are divisive. Um, it is incendiary and um, it is polarizing and has the potential of undermining the peace and security of the country. And I speak as a conflict and mediation expert as well, because I do know that it is as a result of such comments we had the capital riots in Washington. It is because of similar comments there was uh, Kenya became a battleground between the ODM and the PNU in 2007 after that election. It is because of similar comments. Um, Ivory Coast descended into chaos and a civil war between 2010 and 2011. There is always a direct correlation between comments made by politicians and the outcome of an election or the whole political process put together. On the face value of it, um, it, it is an unfortunate comment. However, what usually politicians do is they would, they would say all these things, then the next minute they would come out and say, we have been taken out of context. Meanwhile, on the face value, it's quite obvious and it sends a very dangerous signal to their supporters. And you see, politicians are like pop stars. Um, they garner some level of support. They inspire people. And so whatever they say, they, 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 they are seen more like prophets. Whatever they say has an effect on the thought processes and behavioral pattern of people they inspire. So when you talk like this on a political platform, mm. you send the wrong message. And when the people go out there and cause mayhem, mm. you are definitely to blame. Right. And, and on, the, on the back of that, there are those who are even suggesting that uh, with the security apparatus at the disposal of government, it is easy for the likes of Brian Champon to make such comments and actually mean it because, like they say, if a blind man wants to, uh, threatens to stone you, it means he his leg is on something. Already. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, that I find quite unfortunate. And it boils down to the lack of accountability in this country. Um, I asked West Wagon was a national disgrace. Um, it went to the diplomatic community, it made international um, um, news. Um, a body was put together to look into it. They came out with their recommendations and government completely, so to speak, rubbished it. And the same old people behind it are still at post and are even promoted. So what are you trying to imply? Mm. You know, you're trying to paint a certain picture. I mean, you can do as you wish so far as your government is in power and get away with it. Do you think Double and Co are not on the job? For anyone to think, that they are no longer on the job, then the person might have to rethink. Mm. Because this is Ghana. There's no accountability in this country. People do as they wish. And, you know, when it happens that way, it sets in motion a very dangerous precedent that can badly, you know, bruise or scar our democracy. And I, I find it quite unfortunate. I mean, for someone of his caliber, mm. who is the brain behind all these scandals to still have the temerity to go on the political uh, podium and say these despicable things is something I really find unfortunate. If Ghana were a country that, that believed in accountability, I don't think such a character would have even been on the job, especially after Iowa to West Wagon uh, happened. Right. And, and uh, Mrs. Sani, I mean, this is actually not the first time that on a political platform we've had something like this. In the past, we've had all die, be die. We've had uh, there are many ways to kill a cat. And these kinds of words come from known political activists. And on the back of that, very little is done to either get them to reverse those kinds of comments or any punitive action taken against them. How is it that as a nation pushing for democracy, we allow these things to grow and no decisive action is taken you know, in, in curbing it? 
one, one of the reasons we've come to where we are today is because of impunity. Um, and I must say, without missing words, um, that it cuts across the political divide. Um, mm. we, we have people from uh, both the NDC and the NPP uh, saying things that undermine state authority, it undermines state institutions, and it sends uh, wrong signals to uh, their followers. But nobody has been held to account. The only one I remember is the Afghan and the Mugabe incident. Right. Um, but but in the end, you know, they 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 they, they came out, and mm. since then, at least a move was made then. <laughs> Because right. they, they were taken through the process. But yeah. these days, people sit on radio, they sit on TV, and they say all manner of things, and you know, nobody holds them to account. And I right. think the media also comes to, to play. I mean, professionalism is key. And as you know, as a media practitioner, the, the media is a very powerful tool. Mm. And so when we give them our airwaves to say this, it means we are complicit. And... I remember listening to um, uh, Gitya Afinidazi some time ago saying that even though you issue a disclaimer, views expressed by the guest is not reflective of our blah, blah, blah. Mm. But the mm. fact that it is said on your network means you are, you are complicit. Right. And it, it is high time we put a stop to it. It is high time we hold people responsible for such reckless statements. And if Thank you so much for your time, as always, as a security analyst there. And clearly, it's a conversation that many of you have also had your take on. Let's continue talking about it. It's